sex talk. So we are back today on the sex, sex talk. talk. <laughs> My name's Mo. And I'm Dr. Amy. And what are we talking about today? We're talking about STIs. And for those who don't know what that is, we used to call them STDs, but to reduce stigmatizing, we no longer say sexually transmitted disease. We say sexually transmitted infection. And um, just to age myself a little bit, when I was younger, they used to call them VD. Do you remember? Venereal disease. <laughs> venereal <That's> disease. So <laughs> That is from the 80s. That's where I'm from. Yeah, I'm yeah. from the 80s. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... So STIs, it's a really interesting because, first of all, let's talk about language. You hear a lot of people saying, are you clean? Are you not clean? Is this person dirty? But if we called everybody dirty that ever had any type of scare of an STI, everybody would be dirty. Right. I mean, that's just... And calling someone dirty, like, that's terrible. So let's just throw that out in the garbage and not say clean and dirty anymore and mm -hmm. just ask people like if you've been tested, what that has been like, because the reality is a lot of things that you can get sexually are curable and bacterial. So if every time you said a cold, that you had a cold, I would be like, oh, Mo, you're so dirty. Like, could you imagine if we use that language yeah. with things that are not sexual? It's terrible, it's so right. shaming. Right, yeah. and and the thing about it is, is like, it, you know, I had a client recently who's, you know, deathly afraid of STIs and you're watching this one's for you um, and and I think that like we come from a society that really shames STIs and like really promotes being monogamous with one person sexually exclusive with one person and uses STIs as this way to sort of keep us scared and keep us like monogamous, monogamous with one person and stay with this one person which is interesting because a lot of people that get STIs get it in monogamous relationships because you feel vulnerable you're not using protection right. somebody cheats and brings something back to the relationship mm -hmm. so being monogamous does not protect you from an STI, right. period. Right. So that's fictitious, that's a myth. That's fictitious. And the other thing is, is that STIs are everywhere. It is a lot like catching a cold. Like you can get genital warts mm -hmm. pretty easily. From a towel you can get, you know, crabs. Mm -hmm. um, you can get herpes pretty easily. There used to be this running joke when I first moved to Los Angeles in the 90s that everybody in LA had herpes. And no, a lot like, of people do. And I was like, everybody in LA has herpes? And yes, it's true. A lot of people have it because it's, it's like you can transfer it like you transfer cold. But the reality is that most of these things are manageable or curable. So um, I had recently gone on a date, self-disclosure, and said, hey, have you been tested? And the person said, no, it's been a really long time. I said, well, here's the deal. Get tested. And if something comes up, I'm not going to stop dating you. I just want you to handle it and we talk about whatever it is. Because the reality is if you have gonorrhea, chlamydia, it's an antibiotic. You mm -hmm. get tested, you take a course of antibiotics, mm -hmm. and you're typically fine. Mm -hmm. um, if you have herpes, there's um, suppressant drugs that you can take regularly or when you feel like there's some type of risk feeling, mm -hmm. or you abstain from sex for those couple of weeks when you have an outbreak. And a lot of people carry the herpes virus even if they've never had a sore or only had one sore. So the reality or the likelihood that you're sleeping with somebody that has or have had HPV, herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia at some point is, I mean, most likely. And most people have had that at some point or have had a partner with some of those things. Right. So it's about getting tested, it's about communicating and understanding. And then there's a real lack of education about what these things mean if you've had them, how you get tested, how you get treated, mm -hmm. and who's to blame, right? There's a lot of blame. There's a lot of blame. blame. And I think one thing that is ringing true when you're talking is that it's there's so much self-care involved. Like if we care about our bodies, mm -hmm. if we care about our health, then we're gonna go get tested on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And that can tell you a lot about a person too. And some people are just misinformed. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard people say, well, the partners I've been with told me they didn't have anything. Well, you know what, I know it's, lie or they don't get tested or they feel shame mm -hmm. a lot of people especially stigmatize things like herpes people feel so much shame that they don't want to talk about it because the reception of that information right. ends up being negative right and a lot of people feel shame after they get it and look they they get it because not because they were promiscuous but I think the stigma attached is like oh you must have been sleeping around with all of these people you can sleep with one person and get something. You can sleep one. with one person. Sometimes you don't even have to sleep with them yes. to get some sort of mm -hmm. sexually transmitted. A lot of things are over the skin or with fluids. You could have oral sex. You can have some type of like rubbing or making out and you can get something. I mean, just it, and even non-sexually get one of these things. And then there's also um, things that maybe wouldn't be considered STIs that women get frequently just from 
being sexual or sometimes having sex with partners mm -hmm. that have a lot of other partners like bacterial vaginosis, UTIs, yeast infections. Mm -hmm. So there are just things that happen. You can have an abnormal pap smear because mm -hmm. of something like that, mm -hmm. which yeah. which they're going to tell you, you know, and then they're, they might say you shouldn't be having sex. There might be shaming, like a lot of the medical community, I think, mm -hmm. shames too around sexually transmitted infections. And it's important to know that one, it's not your fault. Two, you can protect yourself, and it's just a matter of just being a little bit more hypervigilant. The same way you would if you were to go outside and it's 20 degrees and you're going to put on a jacket and a hat to keep yourself warm, mm -hmm. you're kind of going to do the same thing when you have sex with someone you having sex with for the kind first time. Kind of like time. the analogy you like, put a, You put yeah. a condom on, kind you of like a coat. On. You put your <laughs> hat on. Yeah. Or I like the um, analogy of getting in a car. So anytime mm. we have sex, anytime we get in a car, there's always there's always a risk. You know, there's mm. always some level of yeah. small risk, even if we're very, very protected. Right. But we don't get in a car and zip down the wrong side of the street without a seatbelt. We put our seatbelt on, we're educated about how the car works, how the traffic laws work. We, you know, are perceptive to our environment. We take these steps to do the best that we possibly can with the knowledge that we have to interact in the way that we want to interact. So obviously we can go down a list of contraceptives and condoms, and, but it's also using things correctly. You don't put a condom yeah. on right before you have an orgasm. You put a condom on at the beginning of the sexual dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think one of the biggest takeaways that I think is important to take away from this STI piece of information is that they're really common. No matter what people are telling you, they probably have had something at some point, and that's okay. It's mm -hmm. actually just not a big deal. And there are certain cultures where people don't care as much, and like maybe the poly community or the swinger community or right. the king community. Right. I see those communities saying, "Okay, you had something, but you took care of it." And right. It's and it's not that fun. they don't care as much. I think they it's they they care, mm -hmm. but they're taking care of it more. They're like you know, it's not as tested. it's not as stigmatized yeah. in those yeah. communities or in the yeah. gay community. Yeah. Um, they're go they're getting tested. Sometimes they're even sharing their results with each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're going to the clinic together if it's mm -hmm. a new partner. And I think that's I think that's a romantic date. <laughs> Maybe not romantic. Right? I think it's great. I think too. it's, I think it's really cool. I love the kink of the kink and poly communities yeah. because there's so much do this together. Education around about. sex. Like let's have sex, but let's do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Let's go let's get tested. Let's talk about it. Set our boundaries. Let's get condoms. Let's get dental dams. One mm -hmm. of the myths that I hear often is that oh, but what if I hear the condoms break and they're not that effective. Mm -hmm. Condoms break like. One hourly, uh, like, what, 98.9, really it's around 99% yeah. effective when used correctly. Yeah. So they're pretty safe. They're pretty yes. safe. Just don't use an expired one and don't go buying a Magnum if you don't need one. And don't poke holes in it with needles <laughs> and you know, don't what people do. Yeah. But even, even with that being said, you know, there are certain types of STIs that actually Yes, you can get them, but it doesn't mean that if you have sex with somebody with an STI that you 100% are going to get that STI. I think we just think that mm -hmm. we're just getting exposed to everything and we're going to get everything right away. There's always a risk, mm -hmm. so you always just have to assume to be safe and play it as safe as possible. Yeah. But even if a condom breaks, that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get something. So that just means, you know, pay attention take things as they come, get tested frequently, communicate with partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's work as a culture to destigmatize the dialogue and the language of dirty, clean, and what mm -hmm. that means. Yeah, and get educated, mm -hmm. you know, talk to your partners. If something smells off when you're having sex with somebody or if something looks off, mm -hmm. don't hesitate to ask because this is your sexual health. Yeah, that and that's an line. interesting thing you point out. Um, look at your partner and I think that that's important anyway but a lot of times especially in like the casual sex hookup culture right. it's in the people dark people go out go to a bar go hook up it's in the dark they go right to penetration right. it's just this, this it's culture just like now drunk is, hook up yeah culture. and so mm -hmm. what's interesting is when I've worked with sex workers that have worked at the legal brothels in Nevada mm -hmm. one of the things they typically will do is a visual check oh yeah the visual check and the alcohol swab mm -hmm. check yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so and um, which is so interesting because they're being taught this just one other measure of safety, like just look at it. Just look at it. Just look at it. And if there's something that seems off, don't shame your partner. Say, you know, I'm a little concerned. I see something here. Let's like, let's check this out. Yeah. And yeah. maybe we don't have to do something with our genitals right now because you know you can have 
pleasure without genital sex too. You can have pleasure without exchanging fluid, like mutual masturbation. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite favorite things in the world. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know you very well. You don't know me very well. Let's mm -hmm. not exchange fluid tonight. Let's just mm -hmm. have some mutual masturbation. Mm -hmm. Fun, fun. Yeah, there's all these alternatives, and especially that goes back to even if somebody, let's say, has an outbreak with, mm -hmm. let's say, herpes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to shut down your sexuality for two weeks. That just means you no know, fluid exchanging, no genital touching. But there's so many other options. Yeah. Like, guess what? You can, do. you can be creative now. You get STIs, to go, yeah. Yeah. You get to go get a blindfold and use a feather and use that candle wax you've been wanting to use mm -hmm. for months to do mm -hmm. the massage. Yeah. So it just increases the creativity and other ways that you have to think around it. But STIs don't mean your sexuality is shut down. It doesn't mean that you're dirty. It just means that life happens and you handle it just like you would handle anything else that happens to you. Yeah. And it's just an infection. We yeah. get infections all the time. Mm -hmm. Sinus infection, staph infection. And for the things that are chronic and require more maintenance, um, something like HIV, mm -hmm. even with HIV, what a lot of people don't know um, is the PrEP. PrEP drugs that are out. And in West Hollywood, where my practice is, I see a lot of clients that take PrEP. And for those of you that don't know, there's an HIV prevention drug that is extremely effective. Mm -hmm. Although people are using that and not using condoms and getting a lot more bacterial infections. Whole nother story. <laughs> Whole nother story. Um, but but uh, we've there, come we a have, long way. We've come a long way, even, even with HIV, where it was so stigmatized before that we have prevention drugs and the management drugs are so different. The management drugs, you can actually virtually be undetectable, which means you cannot spread the right. disease. So anymore. a couple could have one person that's HIV positive that have no detectable virus, yes. and another partner could be negative and that other partner is likely to never get the virus. Yes. So even when we're talking about that, which is the one that people get really scared of talking about, there's so much management for that that it's not what it was. Yeah. So I think education, communication, self-care. I think all of our videos yes. are going to have the same yeah. Yeah. Education, communication, self-care. And get, like, get tested and use condoms if, mm -hmm. if it's your first time. Yeah. Definitely use condoms if it's your first time. They say that anal sex makes it easier to transmit sort of STIs because the membrane in the anus is thinner. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to transmit. So if it's a partner you don't know and you're having anal sex, just use a condom. Use a condom. Yeah, just don't have unprotected anal sex on them the first time because yeah. that could be possibly uh, more, risky. more risky. Or if you choose to do you know what, let's take that back. If you choose to do that, understand what the risks are. Because mm -hmm. everything is a choice and we all engage in things with some level of risk. So if yeah. you choose to engage in something that's high risk, understand what your risks are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just think about it and take care of yourself, take care of your partners, communicate to your partners, and get and tested. And the more we all communicate with each other, the less this is as stigmatized as it is. So let's all work together to reduce the stigma in something that's just very common. Yes. Everybody has experienced some sort of infection, whether it's an STI or some, some other sort of infection. So let's just look at each other like we're human beings that are all susceptible yeah, to it. Not a big deal. Handle it. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was the sex talk. Yeah, that's the sex talk. Bye. Bye. Bye.